The former president of Georgia's in Kiev joining us now, Mikhail Saakashvili, who says the now ousted president of Ukraine had boasted to him about corruption. We'll get onto that in just a minute, Mr. President, if we can. Uh, but first, I want to ask you, why are you there uh, beating the anti-Russian drum? No, I, I think what is really happening here has decisive importance for Europe, for the whole of region of ours. I think uh, if Russians manage to break Ukraine's neck now, then the smaller nations around Russia are really in big trouble. Uh, and so really fate of everybody decided that some of my compatriots died here from snipers' bullets. They were part of protesters. And because people really feel very strongly that every, their fate is being decided here. And by the way, the bravery Ukrainians have shown is a good example for all of us. I've never, ever seen in recent European history anything close to the bravery these people displayed there during the last few days. And also because people in the streets, they are very much aware of Georgian reforms. When I walk there, I'm very well known. I speak Ukrainian. I, 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 I studied here for many years and I lived here. So actually, I'm also part of their society. I'm very close friend to many of their leaders and uh, in a many for many ways this is the place I can call my home so uh, of course I'm back home for to help them I'd, way, I'd like you to sort of illuminate time. us a little bit if you if you would on the conversations you say you had uh, with Viktor Yanukovych when he was president in which you say he boasted about being corrupt having the courts in his pockets precisely what did he say Do, well, give yeah. us an example no I mean guy was, I mean, it's full of corruption. I mean, the whole entourage was full of corruption. And that was just normal way of life here and in other post-Soviet countries. I think Georgia broke free from that system, and that's why Putin was very angry at us. Actually, uh, all, he was very open about and blunt about him uh, bribing uh, judges of Supreme Court. Uh, he never messed words about things, saying that, you know, this is all about money, what they are doing. And the sense they had, you know, that they owned this country, they grabbed it, and they had to, to use it to the benefits of themselves and their relatives. Everything that I hate, this guy like openly exp but, expressed and they're in incarnated in a but, way. But so. given the current circumstances and, and your, your venom towards Russia and Yanukovych's involvement um, there, there would be people who would say, you would say that, wouldn't you? I mean, do you have other people who could back no, up your stories? No, it's not about what I... Uh, come on, what I don't have to... I'm not some gossiper here, right? It's it's about what is happening there. People have eyes and people are like, we can only speak what was happening in open venue. And what was happening in open venue was mass scale corruption, abuse of power, uh, enrichment of bureaucrats. Look, I mean, in my country, I mean, my government, no, basically nobody, almost nobody is rich or anything. These guys were all rich. They are all rich. They all have huge mansions. They all have big villas outside the country. They all have big bank accounts all around the world. That's, that's so obvious. You don't have to be like, uh, they were not hiding this fact. It's not about who said what said. It's about us opening up eyes. What is the reality, post-Soviet reality? All the countries, except maybe with the exception of my country, that managed to do some of the reforms in the last several years. But otherwise, that was the way of life. And that's what Russia's soft power is. Because Putin is very good at uh, manipulating corrupt bureaucrats in its neighboring countries. You know, he is good at that. He, know, he knows how to deal with that. And for him, it would be a disaster if one day Ukraine turns non-corrupt, democratic, open-minded society. And then it would be very very hard to manipulate. And that's exactly what people want in these streets. It's not about my feelings or about my personal subjective experience. Um, you had the Rose Revolution, and um, when you were president, I, I would imagine it was pretty tough trying to turn a country around. It's not going to be easy for them, do you believe, in Ukraine, if this succeeds? Well, you know, after Rose, yeah, after Rose Revolution, uh, Georgia managed to be, become number eight on World Bank list of easiest place to do business. Ukraine is 137th, as far as I know, on that list. We are one of the least corrupt countries in the region. Ukraine is the most corrupt. So there are things th that could be delivered very fast. You know, one of the main things I'm advising new leaders, and I've been basically meeting these days, all of them, and I've been in close contact with them. I was uh, proclaimed personal non grata by Yanukovych government. So after I came here at the beginning of revolution, I was banned from Ukraine. But I met them in the in Europe, I spoke with them over the phone, and I certainly extensively speak with them when I'm here. And the main advice I give them is that you sh they should give immediate deliverables once they take power. People will want, people have expectations, people fed up, are fed up, they think that just talk is cheap, uh, that they need deeds, they need actions, and actions could be done, you know, like 
the, the, there are still people, traffic police, taking bribes in the street. There are still uh, daily visits of the so-called tax inspectors and other services to every single small and uh, medium business uh, harassing them. There is this oligarchic takeover of Ukraine economy when 30 oligarchs have always directed media and parliament and elections and every decision in this country. This needs to be no longer needs to be business as usual. People are amazingly self-organized. I today went to Ministry of Education, which is being occupied by students. Uh, you know, they're uniformed people that were, they are not armed, but they're kind of like semi-military thing. But they're so smart. I mean, these kids, they were asking mm. such smart questions that I don't get. I teach in major Western universities. I don't get such students there. These guys are amazing here. What, they have a really bright future. So they simply should be given their way. What do you make yeah. of uh, the statements out of Moscow within the last couple of hours that uh, military drills will go ahead in, in the west of the country and that uh, we will do anything we, we need to do to protect our naval fleet in the Crimea? I would not take them lightly because in 2008, Georgia was invaded by Russia, precisely Putin's Russia, after military drills. And I think that's an old thing. And what they are doing in Crimea is a very pre prepared schemes. Putin is very good at pre prepared schemes. He's good as a spoiler and to stir up trouble. He's, he, has, he has perfect instincts about that. I think his uh, nightmare would be, ultimate nightmare would be democratic open Ukraine. But if he could stir up long term trouble in Kiev and other cities, then, and he can chop off Crimea and south flank of Ukraine. That would be his ideal solution for this kind of situation. I don't think he has any hopes of taking over the entire Ukraine, but he certainly would like to keep chaos in the rest of Ukraine and get parts of the territory. And uh, actually, what is he doing? He did exactly the same stuff he did to Georgia in 2008 and prior to 2008. He did to many of the post-Soviet countries in the 90s, including my own country. It's nothing new. Good news is that we all know what he's up to. Uh, bad news is that he would be doing that anyway. But uh, I think that's a high time for, uh, for Americans or Europeans and the rest of the international community to tell uh, Vladimir Putin to stay away. That this time it's, Ukraine is too big, uh, he will burn his hands and he should just stay away. Uh, Mikhail Saakashvili, former president, I beg your pardon, I thought you'd stop, sir. Um, former president so of uh, Georgia, we thank you for joining us here on Al Jazeera.